Hey guys, this is Heather at Homeschool Culture and today we're going to discuss everything nature study. I'm going to discuss the books that we like to use, some of the supplies we use, and how do you actually apply it. So it doesn't have to be as hard as you think and if you're someone that's not fond of nature, there are ways kind of around it than actually having to get out in nature every day. And some of us, we live in the Texas heat and in the summer, we're not going outside because it's 110. And then you might be living in the winter at, you know, below zero. So we have to accommodate and make it work for us. So I'm gonna discuss all of that, starting with our favorite books. So if we're gonna do nature study inside, so we're not gonna go out, I'm gonna discuss something with them and we're gonna to learn together because normally it's me learning with them um, over a topic area. There's certain books that I enjoy having. This, if you can see, these are bigger books. They're called uh, More Fun with, Fun with Nature and More Fun with Nature. They normally come in really thin, most of the time paperback. I think I got these on Facebook Marketplace for like $4 a piece. Uh, but this actually entails all of the different books. There's one book that's just on caterpillars, bugs, and butterflies. Frogs, toads, and turtles is another. Snakes, salamanders, and lizards. Rabbits, squirrels, and chipmunks. Tracks, scat, and signs, which we did own that book. My kids loved it. And trees, leaves, and bark. So those are actually all different books. And a lot of times they'll look, and so they'll look like this, and it'll be a paperback copy. Again, this is just one that I got um, that combined all of them. The paperback's probably better, especially if you wanna take it out because these books kinda do get heavy. But I wanted all of them and for the price I couldn't pass it up. So what I will do is I will go in and let's say that we are talking about frogs and maybe we are, we are specific to the wood frog. Then I would bring this page, paper out and I would, we would read over it. If it was nice outside and I knew that these were in our area, we might go and look for them during the right time of year and we might do like a life cycle type activity with it. Uh, let me give you an example of a life cycle activity. We actually did um, the life cycle of the blue morph butterfly. And I don't know if you can actually see all that. What I'll do here is I'll use, um, this is just watercolor paper. And we go in and we'll, most of the time I will write it out for my kiddos. So this is my son's, which you can see I wrote it out for him. And then this one's mine. We are not artists. That's another thing. Let me backtrack. You don't have to be an, art, an artist to do nature study. Please, please know that. I am not an artist. My kids are not, um, some of them don't even like art, you know, but I still love putting together content like this for them because they're gonna remember it better. So yes, you could do just a nature walk where you go and observe, but when you actually put pen to paper or paint to paper, it really does help like help them remember those things um, even more. I try to re like reiterate with my kids, like this, these are for us, it's not for others. We're not showing other people these things. I know I just showed y'all that, but, and we grow. And, and then also I reiterate, like the more that we do it, the better that we're gonna get. And so I just kind of do that, just do it for fun and enjoy it. And then don't stress about the art. If you notice your kids are stressing about the art, it's not perfect, it's not this. I know of some people that did photographs. So instead of doing like drawings and stuff, then like when they were out in nature, they would actually photograph and they would make um, books that way. So that's just, there are ways to adapt it to fit you and your children. But these are excellent books right here. I also love, this is just a book I got. This is a Esporn book, it's an older one. Mysteries and Marvels of Nature. And again, it's just, the spreads just have great information about whatever topic area you're, you know, you have. And so there are other, it doesn't have to necessarily be like this Usborne book that DK books do the same thing. Um, but these are great books to have on hand because they show pictures that are usually realistic. I would say that, try to stick with pictures that are realistic. And uh, it just has a, a wealth of knowledge for you to share with your kiddos. Okay, of course, I can't go anywhere without talking about Gail Gibbons. Gail Gibbons is a nonfiction writer, author, and um, does she actually, she might actually even do the, the pictures inside, the illustrations. But she is a phenomenal at doing nonfiction for kids and kind of just making it on their level, but still giving them a wealth of knowledge. So any type of Gail Gibbons books, like let's say you wanna do one on bats or on squirrels, 
always look and see if Gail Gibbons has a book on that and then see if your library has it. Um, I love Dover coloring books. Um, I also have an insect one, I think, but I don't know where it's at. Uh, but like here's a bird watcher one and forest, um, forest animals. And a, a lot of times the inside cover will have the pictures that they can color um, in color so they can kind of get an idea uh, what color that specimen is, that animal or insect is. So these are really great additions to add. And um, just, I like telling people this because I just don't know if everybody knows it, but what I do a lot of times is, um, especially if you have multiple, multiple kids, I'll make copies of it. I have a printer copier and I'll make copies of it for them to color or I'll make copies and I'll use watercolor paper. And I just bought a ream of watercolor paper on Amazon. I think I have it linked down below in my Amazon shop. And then that way on some of the ones that are bigger specimens, you can watercolor them and they turn out really beautiful that way. Plus they have really great information down here. Again, any type of uh, DK book is going to have really, really great real, real life pictures or illustrations with good information. And then also I like going to the library and finding picture books with whatever topic I'm going over. So like this, if we were gonna go over maybe seeds and acorns or something like that, you could do a book like this because of an acorn. If you're learning about squirrels that year, this is Squirrels Family Tree. I think, I'm thinking we might do pheasants this fall. And so this is Johnny's Pheasant. They're picture books, but they tell real information in them or they tell a story of about it. Like I have a Harvest Moon one I like. Like this one right here is going into autumn, like for the autumn equinox. Listen, listen to the language of the trees. Goodbye summer, hello autumn. You can always bring in um, scientists of that field if you can find like biographies. And so this is obviously Beatrix Potter, who is actually a fam famous author, which we all know. But but she actually was pretty well known for studying um, fungi and mushrooms. So if you're doing one like on mushrooms, you could bring this into the mix. The Harvest Moon is coming up. So if you can find a book on the Harvest Moon, and that's coming up at the end of September. So if you're gonna do it, make sure you get to it. And then just like these fun, welcome to the museum books, which I do not own this one. This is from the library, but they're so beautiful. You literally, again, can open up a spread and do something just over like just one of these spreads. You know, if you were doing something over fungi. So some people like to do nature study more in the, like the idea of like a unit study, which you could totally do that. So you're going over it for maybe many days or many weeks. We tend to do more nature study, like one topic area per week or ever even two weeks. We don't necessarily do it every week. When my kids were uh, younger, our science was nature study. And so that would obviously look a lot different. We would go into a lot more detail um, and it would last, the topic area would last a lot longer because that was our science as well. And honestly, like we went over coral reefs for four weeks. I mean, it really and truly that kind of it, it is nature, right? That is a nature study um, because coral is part of nature. So I'm kind of still doing it with my son uh, a little bit. Another resource that I love that I have used and I, I don't use it. I used it diligently for many years and followed along within reason just because we live in Texas. So uh, the timing's a little different on some things. But Explore Nature with Children is phenomenal, especially if you're like, I don't even know where to start. Here is a great curriculum with for you. I'm not affiliated or anything, uh, but this is a great curriculum to start with. Just real quick, some other books that we really like, and then I'll move on. But anything like this that have sounds that go with them. So... So I love these little books of backyard birds and little book of woodland birds. And I think there's one other as well. Um, my son loves these. So I get these, these are things that I get for Christmas. So it might be like a little stocking stuffer or something like that. And that's another way to get some of these resources that maybe you don't have the funds for to buy right now, but you know, they'd really enjoy it. And again, my son like requested this book. And so I just, it was something that I added into, I didn't obviously fit it in the stocking, but it was more like a stocking stuffer that I added a couple, I think either last year or the year before last. Um, another one is if you do want to try to be artist, which again, <laughs> I am so not, I try, but I'm not 
Then there are books, like this is Watercolor in Nature, and I've checked this out more than once now, and I need to just sit down and devote time to trying to draw, and then using watercolors as well. And again, it just takes time. I mean, like everything in our life, right? It takes time, and if it's something that you, a lot of times I kind of go based on like, if my kid seems really interested, like I really want to learn how to draw these things, then this would definitely be a book that I would um, devote a lot of time to and, and put into our, our day maybe more frequent so that they can get better at drawing, um, drawing nature. Okay, real quick, last things, field guys. So we love to hike and we love when it's weather is nice here in Texas to go on nature hikes. Um, we will go to a local, we have a local path that we can go to. We live out here on like a little farm, so we can obviously just go in our, on our property as well. Things like this, like the Petersons are really, really good. Obviously these are more North American, you know, most of the time, so you might not have everything in there. If you can get field guides more specific to your area, now I know this says birds of Arkansas, but again, we are hiking in Arkansas a lot. That's why we have this one. We also have, pretty sure we have a birds of Texas, but my daughter keeps it in her room. Um, so that is something else. And again, it just has great information. And so when we have migratory birds come in and out, because we have bird feeders everywhere, which is my next thing, uh, we can go and look them up. So what is next? Definitely get bird feeder. So this is a, an example of a bird feeder. You can see that it suctions to the window outside. I've cleaned it up because it, it, they do kind of get dirty, so you have to clean them up every once in a while. Um, we fill it with uh, different bird seeds. Sometimes we'll just do like the, the black oil sunflower seeds. And my daughter, I got this for my daughter for her room. And, but our, the way our room, the way our homeschool room and hers sit kind of um, catty cornered, we are able to see it from the homeschool room as well. So that's a blessing. But we have another big feeder outside our homeschool room. We have one outside of this window right here, which is where we do our morning basket stuff. It's just a great addition to to pay attention to what birds, and, and again, we get migratory birds. Every once in a while, we'll get ones that aren't the normal. And it is neat to go look them up and learn about those. And so even if I have something on maybe the books that week that I wanna do a nature study, we might change it to whatever that migratory bird is and, and learn about that, just depending on time and stuff. So those are fun to have. I would, I highly suggest, I also think this is in my Amazon store. Um, I'm sure you can get them other places as well. Okay, lastly are, uh, what, so what do we use? We use whenever we actually do things. So like if I'm, I'm thinking this year, I'm going to make for my son and I, we're gonna make like a big nature study book using um, this size paper. But I have used like this size before. I have made my own before with, um, and I think I have a video on that maybe, with watercolor paper. And so it doesn't have, again, it can be something, it doesn't have to be a huge piece of paper. It can be very much this size. And this might even be better starting out so you don't feel overwhelmed, like I have to fill the whole page, which obviously we didn't that, you know, the other day. Uh, but this is a great resource. I would say if you, if you do plan on watercoloring, try to get a decent, um, a decent brand or a whatever, just, just because it can kind of get funky sometimes. If your kids are really young, I wouldn't worry about it. If they're older and they're really wanting to pursue like a really good nature journal, then maybe yes, invest in a little bit more expensive. Like this one is the Visual Journal by Strathmore and it's 140 weight watercolor paper. And so you can take it off. And I mean, that's just a pretty journal, right? And then this one is a cheaper version and it's mixed media paper. So sometimes we will use, uh, not necessarily crayon. Well, that's not true. Sometimes we use like the block crayons. Um, can you see those? Like this. And, but most of the time we, we like watercolors in this house. So a lot of times we'll do watercolor unless we're making something with chalk pastels that we're gonna like display somewhere. So other things, oh, and then so like for watercolors, this uh, Jerry Q Art, I don't even know, I mean, I don't know if this is a good brand. This is one that I have and it works for us and we, we, we like it. You can see I'm <laughs> messy. And then these right here, you fill this up with water. So we're really not ones that like to go out and do it, but I know some families do. And so you can fill this up with water and that way you don't have to have water nearby. This little vessel at the bottom and you can do your water coloring at home. I do not do that. Um, 
but you you can you can definitely do that you can do your oh, i'm sorry you can do it on the go okay <clears throat> so what else do my kids love having for nature study uh, a good magnifying glass with some type of light is really good on hand this is also good when you turn 40 like i did and i can't see anymore you use that around the house uh, a good pair of binoculars and we have like i don't know three or four of these various you know price ranges and how well they work um i started out with these pocket magnifying and sometimes my son will still go out and use this and they they actually can see in uh, the hole at whatever they're looking at but for his birthday i bought him this one and this one is it is it bluetooths is that right i guess it bluetooths to my cell phone so i have to download an app just fyi and you turn it on and whatever we see here through this finder it shows up on my cell phone and then you can also even take pictures of it and it's really cool he really likes to look at his belly button which is you know not cool which is kind of gross <laughs> but you know he's a boy so so but anyways he loves this i mean he like will go all over the place and, and do it and he loves it some other fun things you can just add to the mix are like these fandex cards here's one on birds here's another one on trees because there is nothing worse whenever you're trying to figure out what a tree is and you're like i just i don't know what it is um but we do have i don't know if you can see behind me maybe we do have like all of this right here is like nature study stuff um even uh, this is the books i kind of showed you all of this right here is nature study the uh the Julia Rothman collection, fantastic. If you had to buy like nothing else, the Julia Rothman collection would be great for, for and you could literally use it for years of nature study and just have that and, and still learn so much and have so much fun with it. Okay, what else? Oh, the last little things. These are definitely not must-haves, but they're fun to have. A flower press. Um, I can't remember where I got this from. Leaf and flower press. Does it tell me inside? I want to give credit if it's like I got it on Etsy or something. I don't know. I might have got it at a museum or something. I can't remember. Anyways, but a flower press is always fun. My, my daughter loves doing this. A game that we enjoy doing. Of course, like Professor Noggin trivia games are fun. Um, kind of sciencey nature study stuff. But Into the Forest, uh, nature's food chain, food chain game this is so much fun there's also one that is into the desert which i keep saying we're going to open and we still have it but this is a lot of fun and then also like games like this like match a pair of birds and it shows you the female and the male or like bird bingo ocean bingo all of those are fun especially with your little kids and they're such beautiful quality games they are on the little bit pricier side sometimes but they are quality which i uh, value and I'm, I'm thankful for Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you, and then I'll be done. I think that's the last thing. Is I don't know if you can see this, but this is like a display box I bought at Hobby Lobby. I am looking for one of the ones you hang on the wall, the the printer, um, the printer drawers, like from the old. What are they called? Something printer drawers print drawers something but from the back in the day when all of like the printers had those big drawers of all the different uh things they used they had to like attach the printer and they have all the, you know you know what I'm talking about um it's kind of like this but it hangs on the wall and it's big I've been what I really want one of those and I kind of want an antique one so I don't want to just buy it like a Hobby Lobby uh and but they're expensive so like they'll range anywhere from like 150 and every once in a while you'll find one for like 40 on Facebook but you know it's two hours away so it's like by the time you drive there and all the gas it's like you know is it worth it so I just I know it will come one day and I'll get it but I love these display boxes and so like this is moss that we have found um this is like a lichen type material that we have found these butterflies are ones that are on our property that we found I mean they've already been they're already dead obviously I don't kill bugs to add in here so things that have already you know died that we pick up a wasp nest we just literally added that the other day it was up underneath our lid of where our natural gas goes not natural gas but propane and like there's some little feathers there's some cicadas we have so many cicadas it's crazy um a claw of a i don't know if you can see that you probably can't but like a little claw of um a crawdad some acorns just little things like that and so we collect these. Now I'm super excited 
because we are about, my, my son is about to start an etymology class. I think I'm saying that right on pinning. So like to actually learn how to pin the, the different bugs. And I'm excited because I get to be the helper in the class. So I get to learn it as well. So, so as I learn, if I can master it, I will definitely share that with you, but I try not to share things unless I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, and as of right now, I don't. <laughs> so, but if I do, if I can master it, uh, where I feel sufficient in sharing that with you, I will definitely, or I'll definitely share it with y'all. All right. On that note, I hope you have a super blessed day and a blessed week. Tell me down below, what do you think about nature study? Is it something that you do every week, every once in a while? Um, is it a must in your house or is it something that you, you kind of have maybe shied away from, but you want to get into it? Leave those down below and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.